Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. In today's episode, I want a quick look at how to prepare photos within Photoshop so that you can send them off to be printed, so they're the correct size and look the way you want them to look. Now, I quite often get um, images printed for weddings and jobs like that, but these are actually to do with my family. My sister-in-law saw some photos that I'd taken last year and wants a couple put in frames that she can hang in the house. So let's start off by opening up the file we're looking for. And they were shot as raw files, so I'm going to start off by opening this image here. And this has opened up into Photoshop uh, Camera Raw. And as you see, I've already made a few adjustments. I've adjusted the color temperature, the exposure, made a few basic adjustments. And this is looking you know, as, as balanced as I'd like it to look at the moment. So I'm going to move this across now into Photoshop by clicking Open Image. Camera Raw will now open that image back up into Photoshop for me. So there we go. We've got the image now open in Photoshop. I'm going to press Control and Zero to bring it up as full screen. And what we've got here, we've got my brother-in-law, my nephew Liam, my daughter Sarah, my, one of my nieces Nicole, another one of my nieces Amy, and this is the shot we're looking for. So now we've got the image open, uh, I need to resize the image because my, my sister-in-law actually has some frames already that are a specific size so I need to resize this image so that it will fit in the frames that she already has. So the first thing I do is open my crop tool so I can use the icon here or just press C as a shortcut on my keyboard and that's opened up the crop frame now and if you look in this box at the top here this is telling us what the width and height is of this crop frame and you can see at the moment it's 8 inches wide by 10 inches high. So we need to change this to be in the ratio that the uh, frames that my sister-in-law already has. So width-wise, we want this to be 17.75. And you can see now that it's already changed the width of the crop box. And height-wise for the frame, it needs to be 14.5. So there, now we've got the crop frame up. And that's going to be the aspect ratio of the actual image that we're looking for. It's almost you know, virtually a square kind of image. So I'm now going to just compose the image within that frame. So that I'm happy with it and it's something that we can use. Okay, I'll say about there, I'll leave a little bit around the edge just so that everything fits within the, the mat of the frame. Now I'm just going to press enter. And that's now applied that crop to the image. So now this is, the, this is the ratio and the aspect of the image we're actually looking for. Next thing I want to do is, just on my nephew here, he's not going to thank me for saying it, but he's got a slight spot on his chin there. And seeing as this image is going to be hung in his home, or his parents' home, I don't want him to have to look at that for the next 20 odd years and go, oh God, I had a spot on my chin. So I'm going to Control and J to duplicate the image zoom in a little bit Z tool and I'm just going to press J to bring up my healing brush just to clear those off so if you're watching this Liam you can thank me later right so I'm going to go control and zero to bring the back to full screen so there we are we've cleaned that bit up and that will save many embarrassment so now I'm going to shift control E to bring it into one file there now, the other specification that my sister-in-law has asked is she actually wants this photo to be in black and white, which I think is a really good idea. I always think frame pictures on the wall in black and white actually look better than colour pictures. So I'm going to use the Nick Collection software here, and I'm going to go to Silver Effects Pro. There are plenty of good ways to uh, make a black and white conversion within Photoshop, but the, the Nick software is a really good option. If you haven't heard of the, the Nick Collection software, I've got a whole playlist on how to get it for free and how to upload it. It's perfectly legal, don't worry, we're not downloading anything illegally. But it's a really great software for uh, black and white conversions and analog looks to your images. Okay, so there we go. We've got the image now opened up into uh, the Nick Collection software, the uh, Silver FX Pro. And I'm just going to make a few little adjustments just to make this a, a slightly punchier black and white. 
I'm going to bring the highlights down a touch just to bring the details back in the shirt. I'm going to bring the mid-tones down a bit just to bring a little bit of... Bring the shadows up ever so slightly. I'm going to move the dynamic brightness just to give it a little bit more light to it, like that. I'm going to amplify the black slightly, just to add a little bit more contrast and add a little bit of soft contrast at the same time and add a little bit of structure Maybe boost the brightness just a touch as well there we go right so now I've got my black and white conversion complete I'm gonna hit OK and that's now gonna open that back up into Photoshop for me Okay, so there we are. Now we've got the black and white. This is a, it, the Nick collection always makes it as a separate layer. So we've got our original color version there and we've got our black and white version over the top. So now what I've done is I've resized the image to the size that the uh, frame needs to be. I've done a little bit of retouching and I've made a really nice black and white conversion of the image. So we're, we're getting close now to how we want it to look. So I'm going to merge these down so we've just got a single image now. Next thing I'm going to do is just help with a little bit of the contrast in the image. So I'm going to use a curves layer here. Just bring in a curves layer. And you can see by the histogram here that we're just on the edge of the blacks and we're just on the edge of the whites. But I'm going to bring the blacks ever so slightly back in. Just to add a little bit more punch and contrast to the image. I'm going to bring this area up here just to brighten up the skin tones a touch. And I think we're going to call that as is. So before and after. It's quite subtle, but it, as you can see, it's just put a little bit more punch and a little bit more contrast in it, which when this image is printed out, will help it look really good. So I'm going to merge those down again. Next thing I'm going to do is just sharpen this. So I'm going to sharpen on a separate layer. So Control and J to create a new layer. Let's zoom in quite a bit on this. Zoom in, it's already looking fairly sharp, but just to give it a little bit more sharpness for, for when it's printed, I'm gonna to go to filter, and I think this time we'll use an unsharp mask. So let's bring up the unsharp mask here. And as you can see, that's set way too high. I don't know what I was doing with that last time I looked. So this is the Unsharp Mask dialog. You can move the, your little preview window around to give an area where you could see. Normally keep the radius, let's bring the radius up to about one. So we've got a radius of one there. And let's pull the amount up to, we're gonna start with 100% and then work backwards. You can see here, we've got the little preview here that we can click on and off. And it's quite subtle. It's not making a massive uh, difference to it. We could boost it a little bit more. Let's go to 110%. Click that and if you watch the main image. It's very slight, but it is adding a little bit of sharpness to it. So we're gonna click OK. Bring this back out to the full size there. It's barely noticeable, but we've done enough sharpening in there so that when this is printed out, it's going to make a great looking image. So I'm going to merge this down again. And we're almost there. We've got our, we've got our image size to the size of the frame is. It's been uh, slightly touched up. It's been converted to a black and white, and we've done the sharpening now. The last thing I need to do is that because this is quite an unusual size, 14 and a half by 17 and three quarter inches is quite an unusual print size. So when I have this printed, there isn't a paper size to be printed on that fits with that. The nearest I, that the uh, lab that I'm gonna use does is a 16 by 20 inch 
uh, print size. So what I'm going to actually do is have this printed on a 20 by 16, but keep the image size as the 14 and a half by 17 and three quarters. So just to add this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the canvas size. So you've got two choices. This is our image size, and our image size is 17.75 by 14. 0.5 inches wide but we want the paper it's printed on to be actually bigger so if we go up to image and in the image drop down there if you look here we have image size which is giving us the size of the actual image and then canvas size so I'm going to click on canvas size and this dialog box comes up and I'm going to change our sizes here to inches and you can see there that it's telling us the width is at the moment is 17.75 and the height is 14.5 which is exactly what we set it to when we were printing but what i want is this to be the size of the printing paper that the lab uses so i'm going to change the width here to be 20 inches and i'm going to change the height to be 16 because that's the print size that we can actually get I'm going to leave this dot in the center because that dictates where it spreads out from and you can see from that it spreads out from all the areas. If I go to one side it'll place the uh, it, to one side of the paper, if I place it to the other it'll place it to the other but bang in the center there will place it bang in the center. So we're going to click OK and there now what we've got is what that image will look like on a 20 by 16 piece of photographic paper and that's what we're looking for when we get this printed this is what the image will look like we've got the the size of the image that will fit the frame and we've got a little bit of overhang that we can use to uh, attach it within the frame without it just being just the image size itself so that's going to be absolutely perfect so I'm going to save this as it is so I'm going to go shift control s I'm going to name it after my nephew, so I'm going to call it Liam. And just so that I remember, I'm also going to put at the end what the size it would be printed at. So leave a space and go 20 by 16. So now I know when I come back to this image, I'll know what size that I was having it printed at. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Click Save nice high image quality so we've got a nice good size file click OK and there we go we've printed out the we, we've resized the image and that's all ready for that file now to be sent to the, the lab they'll send it back as a 20 by 16 print with the image size that I wanted printed perfectly on it the last thing I'm actually going to do is just as a test I've, I'm going to print uh, a copy out here just on my inkjet printer just so that I can see what kind of uh, yeah, that it, it is coming out the way that I want it to look. So I'm going to open up my printer software. So you go File, and you've got Print here. But as you can see, you've got a keyboard shortcut of just pressing Control and P. So press Control and P. Okay, so Control and P has opened up our printing uh, options within Photoshop. You can see it's, got, it's just got the printer. I've, it's a photo printer I've got here. It's nothing professional. It's just for home printing. Anything I want printed professionally, I'll send that to a lab. And I come down here, and just for this, normally I would I would size it to print. So I'm, I'm just going to click fit to scale, scale to fit media. So that's now brought it down so that on a, an A4 sheet, that's going to be the correct size. It's all in the same ratio. Next, go up to print settings. Here I'm going to choose the type of paper, so I'm going to use Epson Premium Glossy Paper. In the Advanced tab up here, I'm going to go to here where it says ICM. I'm going to turn off colour adjustments. That should stop it giving any um, colour cast on the image at all. Click OK. So now what I need to do is just to load some paper into the printer. So let's load the paper into the printer. Close that in. Put out the input drawer. And click print on the screen here. So we click print.
Now Photoshop's going to send that file across to the printer and it will begin to print it out and then I'll have a test print that I can just have a look at and just check that it looks the way that I want it to look before I go sending it off to the lab for £10 a piece prints. I've just got a quick check here if there's any other um, adjustments I need to make to the image that it's all set and ready to go. And there we go, I'm really happy with that. Looking at this, I'm not sure if it shows as well on camera, but that looks really good. It's a nice contrasty, punchy black and white, plenty of details, see everybody in the image, and that's gonna make a really great image in a frame. So there we go, that's just a quick way of preparing images so that you can send them off to be printed, uh, resizing them, doing any adjustments you need, and getting them ready to be sent to the lab. So what I'll do now is I'll upload these to the, the lab I use, get them printed and when they're back I'll get the frames over here and we'll do another episode on framing the images up. So that's the end of today's episode. I'm Dave Vickers, this is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching, see you next time.